Oh, snap. Where's the Jenny Wolf? She ain't under her carport. I mean, Jetty Wolf port. Just the Jetty Wolf truck sitting there. Getting to chill out. All right, well, we're going on a walk, and I'll tell you all about it right after this. I want to go fishing Cause it takes my stress away I want to go fishing Try and cast my blues away I want to go fishing I don't want to watch the clock I want to go fishing I don't ever want to stop Hey, check this out. Here's an abandoned fox hole. Used to have foxes all over here. They used to actually roll around in, in my front yard. At three o'clock in the morning, I'd open the door and they'd be rolling around in my front yard, the young ones, playing. I'd load the boat, do everything, and guess what? They didn't care about me. We used to have a ton of them here until they got displaced by 48 houses built into their territory where they lived. I said we're going on a walk and here is just a little drainage pond near the house down the street from me up here next to the big bridge that takes me to the boat ramp. But that's not, that's not what I'm here walking talking about. I'd shit if I looked down there and saw a big old redfish swimming right along the bank right there. I have seen videos of redfish getting into ponds in St. Augustine. And there's a lot here. A lot here too. Oh, I keep getting off topic because my last video... Excuse the hand switch was all about the pocket bushman and uh, all the cool sharpening that I did to this but that's not what we're going to discuss today we're gonna discuss or I'm gonna tell you about some big time changes that I want to do with Jetty Wolf. Where it's at right now has nothing to do with the, to do with that. Where it is right now, it's at the shop because it had an O2 sensor failure. <coughs> and it failed pretty catastrophically. So they're fixing that. Let's see how good this wax. Oh. Let's see, what is this? There's a little branch. Ooh. Ooh. All right, I couldn't help myself. They're fixing that. And it threw all kinds of codes and all kinds of stuff. So they're fixing that for free because there was a campaign. Campaign is also known as, a campaign is also known as a recall. Let me set the uh, camera right up here a second. Here, I didn't mention how you put this knife away. But you hold it like this, it's got a lock pin that goes up and this will not shut under damn near any circumstances. But you hold your fingers away, you pull this, I'll show it to you. This is for my subscribers who may not be knife people, but see how that pin pulls? You hold it like this, you pull the pin. And you disengage. Very unique. Andrew Demko, master knife builder. Um, 
he comes up with all this stuff. And this thing is just bad to the bone. It's a taco of stainless steel with a stainless steel blade in it that's super sharp, super thin. It's a great slicer and fits in the pocket really nice. Okay, let me get back on topic here. The, uh, the motor's end, I'm getting the uh, O2 sensor, which if you don't know what an O2 sensor is, you probably have them in your cars, you've got them in your snowmobiles, you've got them on your sailboat. Yeah, I mean, you just these things are just everywhere. I'm kind of messy here. I just got done eating the chicken breast as I was walking. And uh, what it is, it's all for the emissions. And when an O2 sensor goes bad, if you've got any way of measuring your fuel usage, your fuel usage will skyrocket when it goes totally tits up. Because what happened is mine, I, my, my gallon per hour is usually between eh, 8 and 10 when I'm up and running, depending on, you know, the load in the boat, the wind that's catching the top. You know, if I'm into the current, with the current, all that has a lot to do with my gallons per hour on a long run. But um, I know it's 8 to 10. And then I saw it jump to 14, 15, 16 gallons an hour. That's a hell of a jump, folks. So it already threw a code. But, you know, I'm in the middle of... Um, fishing and there's I mean it's like I can't stop so to make a long story short I it was a little bit of a problem I won't go through all the super details but um, I had to take it in and they said they're fixing it under this campaign so-called recall thing and it's not gonna cost me anything spring break starts basically next week so of course this week it's been on and off uh, raining and blowing and now it's beautiful out here but at the same time it's cold so y'all up, up north must be freezing to death if it's cold down here man I mean it's a chilly wind of course I'm still in shorts I mean come on but the thing about this whole episode has made me really can reconsider some things here. You know, at the boat ramp, everybody's like, when you get in the trolling motor, Dave? Well, you know, I think I've, I might have discussed it before. A hundred pound trolling motor on my bow. Where am I gonna put three batteries to make a 36 volt system? Most likely in my hatch up front because that's the only place I really can put three batteries plus another charger plus another charger how much is that going to weigh okay each battery is say let's just conservatively on a uh north star extreme premium battery which after you have them like i have them on the jetty wolf you don't ever want to go back to cheap batteries we're talking about a possible keeping it uh charged on a charger trickled the whole thing it's an agm that has possibly 10 to 12 year lifespan. I had life, lifeline AGM batteries that came with my boat and I think I got eight or nine years out of it and I've got a video all about it. It's on my how to, I believe, playlist. And um, <clears throat> so I was really reconsidering here what I'm gonna do. Trolling motor is out. I'm not putting all that crap on my bow. Yeah, you know, it might save me a little bit, but I just have a friend of mine who's in the charter business. He's a Creek guy. I call him my, my Creek connection. Uh, and he had a two or three, maybe year old troll motor. That was $2,500 batteries, battery charger. And the thing shit the bed on him. So what did he have to do? He went and took it in to get it fixed, and it was a $900 bill. 900 bucks? Holy crap, I would have said, here, take it. Give me another one for 900. Oh my God. I mean, his circuit board thing went out. He's got a self-deploying one that goes, you know, that kind of stuff. 
I'm not, I'm not gonna, I mean, $900, good God. So um, I had another friend that prior to this iPilot thing, I was out with him underneath the bridge, my buddy Nick, the Irishman, who's been on some of my videos that we just have a hoot because he's so funny. Nick just makes me crack up. But um, his burn up, and I think he took it in. This is before the iPod. This was a, oh, wirelessly, and you had to turn it with this little, you know, controller that you kept in your pocket or whatever. Or you could snap it on a holder on your fishing rod. Well, he took his end to get it fixed because we were out one day and the thing starts smoking. Smoke's pouring off the top of the goddamn trolling motor. And uh, his was a Minn Kota, I believe. Yeah. Minn Kota. And he took it in to get fixed, and the guy said it'll be 800. He went 800. <laughs> I mean, I mean, this stuff's getting expensive, folks. You know, I can understand if you go fishing once a month, you know, and you love spending money on shit that you ain't going to use that much. But in all reality, I'm not dropping eight, nine hundred dollars when something breaks. I mean, yeah, it's devastating to lose an anchor and all, but so what it boils down to is I am pursuing getting a kicker motor for the back of the Jetty Wolf. And there is going to be a ton of ideas and ways I'm going to do this and parts and pieces that I need to get. And you're gonna, you're, I'm sure I'll get comments galore, possibly, because I was looking at Suzuki's. I was looking at Suzuki 15. I want to stick with as much horsepower and weight that I'm willing to put on the stern of my boat. And I was looking at a Suzuki 15, and they come in 15 inch shaft and 20 inch shaft. I even, while I was at, the mechanic getting, you know, turning the boat in to get fixed, I even mentioned it to him. How much is this going to cost me? Blah, blah, blah. Well, come to find out, I was thinking, huh, I got a 30 inch transom boat. My Suzuki's 30 inch, uh, 30 inch shaft engine, 250 horsepower. I decided to give old Julie a ring, who is the owner of the people who built my boat, Pacific Boats in Marysville, Washington. No, not Washington, D.C. That's the first thing people always ask. Really? Called her because they put kickers on right at the factory. They install engines right at the factory. And I didn't call her. Oh, that's right. I, I emailed her. And I said, hey, Julie, I'm thinking about, you know, an auxiliary engine. I know you all do it. Um, I'm thinking about a 15 Suzuki. And she comes back immediately and says... We do all extra long shafts on our kickers. She says you can only get really in a lot of these boats you can or engines you can only get a 9.9. .9. And I went, oh, a 9.9 .9 extra long. They don't make a 15 extra long. And I'm like, oh, okay, thanks. I mean, she let me know that's some pertinent information there. So what I'm thinking about really settling on is a really nice Mercury 15 horsepower, high thrust, comes with a four blade propeller that's all wide and cupped for like trolling and pushing heavy loads. It's got a ton of features. It's a 15 that's got a 25 inch shaft. So I'm thinking about doing that. That's, I'm really settling in. The price is good. Um, I can get it, have it shipped right to my door. It's got a five year warranty instead of a three year warranty. Um, it's got some features about it that none of the other ones have. And I mean, we'll go into that if I, you know, if I uh, pull the trigger and everything, because I'll be doing Vi uh, video series of how to or how I'm doing all this and putting this on my transom of my boat.
Um, but there's some things that I want to do, and I want to keep it real simple in the beginning. And then as I go along, I'll see, you know, like turning the wheel and turning the kicker with the big engine. Throttle, maybe, on the dash for the kicker. Key switch for the kicker. There's uh, endless opportunities. And no, I'm not going to be able to... Um, you know, sit out in the channel of the St. John's River or the jetties and just idle into the current because there's going to be, you know, there's always wind and sideways pushing and all. It's a get home engine. It's get home, even if we have to get home slow or get closer to the boat ramp, it will be, yes, trolling down the ICW, the Intercoastal Waterway in the wintertime for trout, trolling for trout in a creek, uh, trolling the beach for king mackerel in the summer, just on a nice day, holding into the current at the jetties when we're doing a certain type of fishing. Gas, electric start, that's what all this will have. So I'm really wanting to pull the trigger on this. And now that, I mean, spring is coming here, uh, things are gonna start to roll. Um, I've got a lot to juggle. I'd have to do this between charters and I've got, you know, a lot of issues with the prostate stuff still. And I'm just constantly going to the VA clinic in Gainesville, Florida to, I got, appointments that I got to constantly do with that. And I'm seeing urologist here. It would be easier if I had prostate cancer and they just took the damn thing out. I got all that. I'm juggling, you know, a bunch of stuff. And um, so that's what this video is. That's what video video was about. There could be some changes uh, going on to the Jetty Wolf. And it's always like my top that I put on. I wouldn't trade that for nothing. And people might have said, why don't you get a T-top instead? Well, instead of a T-top, I got the mega top. So I do things many times not what the masses do. I think that would be obvious to you. Um, if you know my boat, you've been out with me, you see my boat in my other videos. I'm not stereotypical Blingmeister Florida guy. I'm not a pathfinder dude. I'm not a bay boat kind of guy. I've had bay boats. I've had bay boats. I was on a, I, I used to get a free bay boat. I had six of them for years. I had kind of a sponsorship deal, sponsorship deal. I ran, you know, a demo boat for a dealership for years and um, had bay boats. I got rid of everything. I got the boat. I got the boat. I got the only boat I'll ever need. And I'm making improvements that definitely fit me. T-top is nothing but roaming shade. Every time you turn, you got four or five people. They move over to one side of the boat. My, tea, my top, yeah, we might not be flicking and, and casting as much, but I don't do a lot of that. Trolling motor, I'd have to have some welding done. And, have a bracket, all that weight. I mean, my boat is rated for, God, I think I could put twin 300s on my transom if I wanted. So 130 pound, maybe 120 pound, uh, 15 horsepower four stroke sitting on the back. It ain't gonna do nothing to the back of that boat. Ain't gonna do nothing. I got trim tabs, I just go send one down and level her right out again if I have to. There's a lot coming, a lot coming to see these projects in motion. So subscribe, give this one a thumbs up. Uh, you know, everybody says that. Bridge traffic, gotta hear it all the time. Um, and I'm not necessarily doing all these videos just for my subscribership, the 7%. You know, I'm doing videos now. I'm gonna really 
the videos aren't for just a small set of people. They're for all of YouTube. Kind of like this. It's for everybody out there who is a Cold Steel fan. Not necessarily people that just view my channel. Because y'all, all my subscribers, let me know how much they hate knife videos. Because it gets no views. So this will be interesting. And I will title these videos if I go ahead and pull the trigger on doing all this. I'm literally going to show you from ordering to installing to working for a living. All right. So thanks for watching. Here's a little shot of right what is just on the end of my street where I live. Salt marsh. And of course, a big giant bridge. I've been all the way back here, all the way back at the end of this creek before in a boat and the shrimp were about they were just boiling on the surface and we scooped shrimp right off the surface. Out this way, out this way right here is where I put the boat in the water. And that's where the river's at, way over there on the other side of all these trees. There you go. I'm gonna continue on my walk. I'm gonna continue on my walk because it's supposed to good be good for exercising your prostate, if nothing else. If nothing else, I want to keep these prostate infections at bay. Because let me tell you, that's where the problem lies. Oh, those, those infections are what knocks your... As they always say, knocks your dick in the dirt. Infections. All right. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.